Welcome, everyone. My name is Maureen Antunes, Festival Director for Spark Animation, and I'm very pleased to be here to welcome you to this session in our Le Legends and Landmarks series. Lorraine Mamura started working in the industry in the early 1960s. A classically trained artist, she had walked into Hanna-Barbera uh, because the ink and paint department had been hiring, and someone there spotted her talent and suggested that she may want to go into backgrounds um, and had her portfolio reviewed by a team in the background department. And while she didn't walk away with a job that day, uh, Willie Ito did eventually hire her and she became the first woman and for quite a while, the only woman working in backgrounds at Hanna-Barbera where she spent 30 plus years in the industry. This is the first time Lorena has sp spoken publicly about her experience. And it's a really fascinating walk through the early days of animation on television. And she takes us through and shares some great memories about working at Hanna-Barbera. Here's our conversation with Lorraine Mamura, a true veteran of the industry. When did art first become part of your life? Ever since I was a wee baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I was being held in my, my father's arms going down an elevator in New York, and he took out his pencil and a pad of paper, and he drew a horse's neck and a horse's back. And I looked at that, and I understood what he did, and I went, oh. And that was the first, <laughs> that was the first awe moment. And I've always been in the arts or creative ever since. So was your dad an artist? No, he wasn't. He, he just liked the He was an engineer, and uh, he, he, he was checking uh, aircraft um, drawings, you know, for the government and stuff like that and he spoke five languages so he, he had very good schooling in Estonia so and that was his um well he, when he met my mom in New York and that started a whole whole family and a whole new life for him oh that's amazing so you grew up in New York I, I started in New Hope. Yeah. I grew up in Hollywood. <laughs> I, 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 so what took the family from New York to uh, Los Angeles? Well, I, I think there was something called the milkweed that spread the horrible pollen every spring in New York. So, and then my father had had TV, but sort of overworked. So we, we decided it wasn't a very healthy environment. But he had a friend from his university in Estonia who was in Hollywood. He was, he was um, uh, a film grip, but he always worked for Betty Davis. So whatever she did, a film she was on, she always hired him. So he was Uncle Peter to me, and uh, he, stole my, he wrote my dad and said, uh, there's no milkweed out here. <laughs> so, so why did you come out to California? And he lived in a, a duplex. So so we had a place to come to in, in Los Angeles. And that started it. Um, okay, so now you're in LA. How old were you when you the family moved there? I think maybe around seven. Okay, so that's that's pretty early. It is really early. So at that point, you kind of already know what art is, and and you like Tron, but or were you like, you know, at this point? I mean, you're so young. When did you actually make the decision that uh, you wanted to do art for a living? Well, I guess that well, by the time I got into high school, the possibility was turning in my head because I didn't know that women could, you know, me. Uh, get into positions there and uh but i th i was just crazy about drawing i mean my my high school teachers i'd be i'd be drawing on my my uh notebook paper and she came up to me in the class one day and she said well i think you better have art as your uh, future <laughs> so i i think that that just said it and I, I i started uh, you know seriously thinking i didn't know much about the field i knew there was advertising there were that was the era of uh, the beautiful uh, illustrators uh, the, the the uh top i guess in in the united states so 
So it was some magazines like Collier's, and mm. uh, they always published a beautiful illustration almost every month. So it sort of just got into into me. And um, when I got to, it was a Catholic girls' school, and um, Bing Crosby and Bob Ho would uh, put scholarship money for uh, the Catholic students. So I think my father found out somehow, and um, uh, they um, supplied money for me to go to Chouinard Art Institute. Okay, so let's back up for a minute because there's a couple of interesting things here. The first is to give people context. What kind of timeline are we talking? Was this like the 40s, the 50s? Well, I would say the 50s. Okay, so it's the 50s. You're at a Catholic school for girls. Oh, yeah, the teacher tells you that art is something you should be in your future when it's clear that art is not really open to women at that point. It, it's yeah. still very much a men's thing. Yeah. And your dad goes out to try to get you the scholarship to try to yes, help you into yeah. this field. I mean, that's a lot of, you know, taking a lot of gambles. Um, it, it is because no one knew at that point if you could earn a living as in God too. So, so I read a statistic at one time, and they said uh, at that period in the 50s that uh, one in 20,000 Art students could earn a living wow. at, with art. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, this, this probably included the very famous illustrators like the Wyeths and, yeah. and uh, at the time. And I, I didn't consider my work anything <laughs> that good. So, um, I, I, uh, we moved to Los Angeles and then to North Hollywood. And so really at uh, my whole high school, I, I grew up in North Hollywood. Was there a lot of arts there? Uh, yes. I, I think just living there, uh, you bumped into people yeah. all the time. I, I had a free ride on Trigger's drug double ones. <laughs> okay, let's uh, uh, What is that? Roy Rogers and Dale Evans were the singing cowboys. <laughs> And we lived further out in the valley before it got settled, the San Fernando Valley. So I, horse crazy, you know, yep. teenage girls are horse crazy. So I'd hang around the flipping <laughs> place. And so I guess one, one of the uh, fellows that took care and trained the horses took pity on me. <laughs> <laughs> and said, how would you like to ride Trigger's Double? And it was a beautiful, you know, Palomino with a white blaze on its face. And so, so I got to ride around the arena, and so that that settled it. <laughs> this place, all these things happened. So, so it was. Uh, it's uh, really wonderful. <laughs> so that's a story I haven't related in a long time, but. Well, I'm, I'm really curious about your dad because you know here's a man who's educated. He's an engineer. Uh, and, you know, in the 50s, women are still kind of expected to, you know, get married, settle down, have kids. Careers are not really something that we're talking about. And your dad wants you to be an artist. He wants you to be, have training. Um, well, yes. And there's this kind of a asterisk part, part, part to it. Um, I have to explain that he was from Estonia. He emigrated to the United States before the Nazis no, okay. came in. And uh, so he was a new agreement, uh, immigrant, but his parents ran an orphanage, and he was uh, having spoke, I believe, European, different European languages, including English. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he, uh, they believed very much in education. So my brother went to Notre Dame, uh, and he went to the Catholic boys school. I went to Catholic girls school. And uh, so, and he gave gave me, because I like to read, he gave me lots of books. And if I stayed home from school, he'd come in with an art, art load of different history, uh, and uh, which, which I loved, and things about art. So my gifts my Christmas gifts were were usually related. 
He was priming you. Okay, so let's talk about this. You, you're you in high school. You decide that you want to try to be an artist. Um, talk about the scholarship and then moving on in your education. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it was, and I think for four years, I, I would, on Saturday morning from North Hollywood, I got on a bus and a trolley, and I went down to what's called MacArthur Park. There was a lake. And then Chenard was right there a block away. And uh, so it was um, evidently I got a lot out of it because when I graduated, um, that particular scholarship was ended. And um, my parents said, that, well, they couldn't help me through school. Mm -hmm. So I whipped up a portfolio and I... I did do one year as a fresh freshman that we call this a different name here. Yeah, and um, so I I learned a, a little bit more, but was not able to continue. So I started looking looking for jobs. I, I worked for thrifty drugstore as a cashier and uh, that sort of things. And um, then I got married and I had a wee bear. <laughs> so that stopped it for a while, but then uh, I guess that gradually, um, by, oh, I have to say, when I was going to art school, um, I had a ride from a fellow student, and we go down, a, a, it was called Coenga Pass, and that was the main, the main uh, exit through the hills from Los Angeles to the San Fernando Valley, which was half agricultural at that time. And it was trolley tracks. I mean, there were like eight rows of trolley tracks going through this. So we had to drive on a road at the edge and I would pass the sign every morning and said, Hanna-Barbera. And I'm going, what's a, a Hanna-Barbera? <laughs> I, it doesn't sound like a manufacturing company. What is it? So it was like uh, we're passing by this every, every day. Morning, yeah. Every day. So I, I guess further down the road, I learned a little bit about animation um, from the teachers at Chenard. Uh, we had someone called Art Babbitt who worked for Disney. And uh, my drawing teacher, actually, he was the instructor for Disney for Bambi oh, wow. and those films. And he actually he's one of the best teachers the school had. And I still have his, his book. I mean, he talked about composition, <laughs> drawing, and so on. And uh, so it turned out that I found that this in the animation studio. And I'm looking for an entry uh, job of some kind. Mm -hmm. So I made um, I made an appointment, and uh, when I got there, <laughs> um, the lady that interviewed me was the he head of their ink and paint department. Okay, and that was one place that uh, women could get a job, and uh, at the Disney Studio. Uh, those women were very useful and talented, so they were very well respected. So I thought, well, I don't know about this part of it, but maybe I know enough that uh, they could use use me. So I I went to my interview and I bought my portfolio, and they said, oh, well, would you like to show this to somebody? So. Willie Edo, young Willie Edo, is my height, cute as could be. <laughs> and he comes out and uh, took me over to where he was working. And I Iwao Takamoto was there as well. And so there they had all these drawings about the Jetsons. Okay. And I'm going, wow, the, the tenor. I mean, he's drawing the characters, and they're going through the sky in the spaceship. And I, I'm going, you know, oh, my goodness. You know, 
Uh, what a surprise. So I, I guess at that point, um, they didn't have a dog for me. At, they were maybe in between, okay. which was okay. But I, I was like, wow. So there's a whole field of um, studios who do animation, and they hire artists. So I think, um, yeah, I, oh, see, I forgot the name. I, I did land a job with Ink and Paint Lady. Um, oh boy, I, I can't think of it right now, but, um, that was a, my first hire. And so that one thing led to oh, another. Yeah. And, you know, you joined the union, you started meeting people and how, how do you, where, where are the other places? So I, I think uh, ladies and men were very, they told me where they were and and who they were and so on and so it was like you start to build a now the open door yeah now. and uh uh so I, I i as i say one thing led to another and um uh, uh willie ito had a little uh a studio that made for form little advertising Cards for drive-in theaters. Oh, cool! So you know, I could do the color design. I knew what to do with lettering. So, so I I worked. I worked. Uh, it was called TSA Film Company, and it was uh, I guess a Canadian man he came down to Hollywood, and he was running this little company. Wow! So, so I I did that for about a year, and uh, so I think. And, and Willie, you got that because Willie saw your work when you went in for that ink and paint job. Yeah, yes. Oh. And so I felt very, I thought that was the opening. Uh, Hannah Barbier was not the first one I worked for. Oh, it was Filmation. And uh, so I, I gradually worked as assistant background. And then according to the unique category, then I worked up into being a journeyman. Okay. And then finding out the industry, it had, you know, say six weeks or 13 weeks of work because they were always under contract. So um, that's how I, I learned what the network was and got to meet people. And I could say that people were very, very kind and helpful. Yeah. You know, not what you would think the other way around. And uh, so it didn't, I it never questioned, it never seemed to matter that I was a woman or not. I just, I'd bring my portfolio and, yeah. and they would, oh, okay, you know, she's got some ability. Yeah. So I, I guess that I just gradually worked up and, and working for various uh, studios freelancing when I could, uh, and then you learn a lot and uh, meet a lot of people. So um, really every year there's a big turnout, you know, as you finish your contract, sometimes you get a job at the same studio, but then uh, they may not have something right away, so you go around somewhere else. So I, I, I really learned how to network, and I kept drawing. And if I needed a little job on the side, I'd take it, you know, for Christmas holiday or something like that. So that's like a simple. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you put it that way, but the reality was that you worked in the industry for 50 years. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, and it, it just said, like, I love to draw. What else am I going to do? I, I'm not like, like an executive, so um, I I had I think one secretarial job. I I, I worked for a retail company called. Um, oh, now I'm having, <laughs> I'm having a senior moment, but it was a Cana Actually, it was a Canadian company uh, based in Los Angeles. Oh, really? and they and they did uh, credit retail. Um, reports 
for large companies, small companies, schools, and so on. So, wow. so I I learned I did typist and and um, yeah, I think I I held that job for about a year, year and a half. Oh, wow. so gradually, I guess that. Well, I, I think of that now because here I am in Canada. Ah, and, so it and, seems like and, a thing. And, and the first real job I had was a Canadian company yeah. in Los Angeles. It was meant to be. Yeah, it was. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, so eventually, I was hired at Hanna Barbera in the background department, which was quite a thing when you think about it. Because the the boss and the head of the department was from uh, Central America, Costa Rica, as a matter of fact, and his name was Fernando Alegre, and um, he never hired women. <laughs> he had a department full of young men, and oh. and all, they were all the artists. But I guess I don't know why, but he liked my portfolio. And I was the first woman he ever hired. Wow. So uh, I felt, um, wow, it was very special. And um, so that really uh, got me settled, settled there with that, being able to work for that company. And what was your first uh, project that in your life? Uh, I think, was it, uh, I don't think, probably a Flintstone. And then there was a spinoff, uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam, yes. which was a Flintstone children. And uh, so they had so many productions going, which we where we see there. Uh, uh, there was the, the, the Jetsons, Augie Doggy. And then ben. were you working like on all of the projects or were you specifically working on like one series at a time? Well, it may, may be one series at a time but but it there was spillover yeah and and uh so it, i guess it was the, the the flintstones were were some of the first ones i i worked and uh fernando was the one that went from the white rocks and then he read he was very talented in color so it became that warm sandstone oh. and then he developed a a technique because uh, they were uh, doing a lot, a lot of work uh, diff from different studios and uh, Flintstone. I thought maybe it was fifteen or or sixteen contracted at a time. Oh wow! And he really developed a, a beautiful uh, design. So I learned. So yes, in my portfolio, mm -hmm. I, I learned from him because I had to follow. The rules, the rule book. Yeah. And so you learn by, yeah, you have your own way of doing it, but then you learn a lot because you adapt to uh, someone else's work and you're able to take direction and, and, uh, and then you get good at it. So many opportunities came and, uh, he eventually left. And then um, I have a picture of him. Al Demir was another, his, the next head of the backroom department, which was this gentleman. And I'm here. And then they started hiring women. Yeah. More, more so. But there's only still three of you in the entire team. Oh, oh, yeah. But I have to say this, that for maybe a good... 15 years, I was the only woman there in the department. Always men. Great. I had a great time. <laughs> it is. Then the women start coming in and training, and, uh, and that was great. So by the time this picture happened, yeah. um, the women were being hired. That's the you are in the higher category. So I guess I was first. And uh, he, uh, Monty, he was prejudiced against women, but I don't know, for some reason, he just swore. <laughs> <laughs> and he liked my portfolio. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's talk a little bit about this because 
you know, you're working in a department full of men. Clearly, there was this idea that women couldn't do the job or weren't good enough to do the job. But here you come along and you're doing the job just as well as everybody else. Oh, we're doing fun. Was there any pushback from anyone else in the studio or from any of your colleagues? Not really. Yeah. And, and I think one of the first jobs I had it is, as a matter of fact, was at Filmation which was in uh, Woodland Hills. And uh, they started, they started, oh, okay, if they had a woman in the background, they were, yeah, her name was Gloria. And I guess that I was making such a big deal because I wanted to impress, you know, I, I was running around the hall and, you know, I go, <laughs> and, and I wanted to look up, I wanted to do it. And so she had the nerve to confront me one day. Yeah. She came up to me, and it's like, God bless her. I mean, it turned out, I mean, she's a really good Christian lady. And she said, well, you know, you're really, I think you're sort of overreacting about what you're doing. And, and the rest of us are working. And you, can you just bring it down a notch? <laughs> yeah, a notch. And, I didn't resent her at all. There was just something about her, and it was uh, honest and sincere. And I recognized so, what I was doing, so it was it was fine fine with me. And and I'm glad she had the nerve to go do it. I mean, she was very nice about it, but firm. Yeah. So Gloria and I became good friends, and and uh, um, I've uh, she's been my friend until until she died a few years ago. Oh, that's amazing. But. Uh, it lasted, and there were a couple of other women who who were Christians, and they all knew each other. And I just have to say, I didn't know, you know, but it was like, these are straightforward, honest ladies, because some of the other women in there were, <laughs> you know, little, <laughs> little over front. And, and, um, and so it, I guess I felt, I felt more comfortable. So. And that's part of the story. Uh, I mean, I, I became a born again Christian eventually, and it was like um, that's what I realized about these women. They were something very different. They were talented. They weren't stupid, <laughs> and but there was a, a kind of an honesty and sincerity. Mm -hmm. So I just felt I, from the beginning more comfortable with that and um but i say the men i work with are all helpful i i think i learned so much from uh many of them that that were willing to share what they worked very hard to uh, to the end yeah. you know and i mean some some wouldn't but but it was uh, i have no bad things to say about them <laughs> the only thing is in the old days, they used to put the oh, animators, the men, all in one room, and you walk through, and there's cigar smoke, oh. sweat stench, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, avoid that whole <laughs> Yes, and and but it was okay. They were okay. They were doing their doing their job. Yeah. But, but um, it it changed, and the atmosphere became much cleaner. <laughs> Once women started doing animation, it, yes, and when they were coming in and mixing it up, and I'm I'm sure that if the guys were joking during the day and you know smoking their cigars and their cigarettes. Yeah. But um, that. Was the old fashioned way, and it yeah, uh, and it started changing. Well, yeah, and yeah, I mean, you saw a lot of that change, right? Because you were so involved from early on. Can you talk a little bit about that process of, you know, on a year to year basis? Of, let's talk first about the technology and how that changed mm -hmm. over the years. Because talk a little bit about, you know, when you started, what your job looked like, and I mean, I, I know that you also moved as you gain more experience. You kind of you start doing some supervisory positions, yeah, and you do some other things in background. But you see how the technology changed over the years, and you worked like, right into the like the nineties and two thousands. Yeah, just Talk about that. It just worked into it, I think, because television was coming to everyone in their yeah. 
And uh, the major motion pictures were not that interested in animation. So I think men like Bill, Hannah, and Adu Barbera got together and they decided they were going to um, approach television. And so I think they invented Tom and Jerry and um, uh, uh, the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Warner Warner Siphon, and I tied in. So they really started producing for television. So uh, next to Disney, I believe they um, were the second studio in Hollywood. And uh, it was Disney was first, but uh, but um, they weren't doing daily television. And Hanna Barbera, they both latched onto it. Yeah. So it was this uh, wonderful Italian man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was a, he was an Italian Catholic, and Joe was a Irish Catholic. So we always say that was the, what they had in common. <laughs> <laughs> and, but they worked together very well. Uh, uh, J- Joe dealt with the clients and selling to uh, whoever would be a client, a corporation. Um, uh, it, any company that had money and uh, they could uh, get into advertising. And uh, Bill was the boss. And that was his, he was the strong boss. He knew how to write the music. He did from um, the story, this like, like, almost like a storyboard okay. and, and uh, planning all the shots, all the way he could do that. Wow. And he was a, a very good boss, uh, but he was very strong about it. But he was a, a very compassionate man because I, I remember uh, someone had uh, work, working for the studio got into a horrible automobile accident. And he right away jumped in and helped uh, him have money. So he he uh, he was a, and then he knew how. There's always this ambition, vicious man that comes up, and you know they want to sort of take over and blast through yeah. everything. Um, Bill just knew how to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, but then, so a couple of them went off and they started their own studio. Yeah, they do their own studio, they're not his. Yeah. <laughs> He's, so how did the technology change over the years? Well, I think that they found um easier way, like Fred Flintstone. Uh, uh, Iwo Takamoto was um, uh, Bill's art director, and he was fresh from the, from the camps of the oh, wow. war. And he came out, and he missed part of his college education. But he was an absolute genius as far as development, and his drawings were superb. And so he was, until he retired, he was the vice president. Oh, wow. So he ran it, and Willie Ito, after a while, um, was working there uh, with the wow. And so they changed the technique they simplified the technique, and the, and it was in the story, the story department, the story way they set the programs. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's where the change in both technology and in the design, like Fred, is a pretty simple. Yeah, you know, and then the background of the rocks, and uh, Monty developed a, a really beautiful way of doing it, but it was developmental. It started with these gray, chalky-looking rocks, and it gradually tanned up, and then we had a way of doing the texture. And so it, it settled into a more um, a simple design. And so you had uh, the regular camera, so you could move. You could zoom in like this, or you could pan this way or that way. And so all we had a camera department, and so all that was developed within the camera department. Wow. And um, you had exposure sheets, 
say this is before the digital age. Yeah. <laughs> but the, so we had an animation director and a Bill Hanna did it too. So we would you would expose it on exposure sheets. Um, also the increment, how how fast or slow or a camera turn. So all the moves were, were done with with a large camera. Wow. So so they were developing all of that on the fly, basically. Yeah, yeah, they did. And it was successful. They were able to make money at it, uh, produce good good shows. Mm-hmm. And I think their philosophy is they never went to really evil or scurrilous things. Mm-hmm. Um, they had people like the mm-hmm. singers Knights of Satan or something, and they wouldn't would do it. They, they, ne- they never touched that. Yeah. No. So I guess uh, Joe could uh, very graciously know how to not yeah. do it. Uh, he was a very smooth gentleman and, and uh, I, I guess in his way very valuable to their partnership. And so he handled he handled that part of the um, studio. So, uh, and for you, what what were your days like in the early days when you started, and then towards the end when you were sort of you know already kind of into the digital uh, way of doing things? What did that look like for you? Oh uh, well, gee, I survived the digital because I didn't have to do it. Oh, well, you didn't have to do it. You know, so, and this is early, so I I quit somewhere. Uh, but um, it was going. I I think they were uh, they were uh, going. It can paint. They were doing digitally first. Okay. Some was done in the studio, but they were companies offshore. Okay. That were doing it. So we would prepare the the drawings and everything. You had to be out at four o'clock because that's when the postal thing went. So so we geared ourselves from. Nine and having to produce something to send uh, offshore. So this was wonderful with the union because <laughs> they wanted to keep everything, orders. but they couldn't do it. I mean, they, what was available, it 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 couldn't be done. But we grumbled about it. We understood because we didn't want to see people here lose their jobs. So they had to do it. Oh. Oh. Send some things overseas. Some compromise. Some compromise. But uh, they both were pretty honest. And um, Mr. Hannah was never doing anything underhanded or scurrilous. You always knew he informed you. And um, he, he was very, very good to work for. Never. You know, I'm glad he was the head of the studio. Yeah. So I think that gradually uh, uh, they started doing ink and paint digitally. It's okay. As far as that part of it. Yeah. And so um, the ink and paint department shrank. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, quite a bit, but not totally. So uh, I always considered that um, a place I could go for company or you know talk to people yeah it was it's nice working with people so yeah so uh digitally is very very efficient there's still people doing it and maybe that's i guess that's where i worked into uh more design and development the kind of things that willie willie was doing so it was stylizing things it was uh stylizing with color Stylizing the um, background uh, drawings, and so I, I actually I learned a lot more, and it was a lot of fun. So I I, I felt very upbeat, and uh, I I would be one that I go talk to Ewo and and what he had in mind, what direction to go toward for this production, and and then I met some other. Uh, she was a some woman family. There was this, a beautiful woman who had about ten children, but she was a fantastic 
artist, and she worked with Ewo all the time. They designed children, colors, and as the storyboard. So, so um, they were heading toward it, but they had uh, uh, people with a, a lot of talent that would uh, draw beautiful people, and and uh, so. Um, and gradually, I guess things started to change a bit, but but not not. Basically, you you're still on a pencil, you're still drawing, you're still designing. It's just that you prepare a package to feed to the computer person who 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 entered Oakland material. Yeah. So we were working together. We're su- we're still. Employed with pencil and an eraser, yeah. And uh, the creative part is still the same. So yeah. you you put it down, and uh, and then it goes uh, prepare for the person who is at the at the keyboard. Yeah. And so, but that part I don't know how they did it, but I know that we had to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's where it, where it was. That's really Can you look, look, at, look at the technology and how that changed the little work. Yeah, I was going to ask you about what that looked like for you, sort of like on the other end after you see you've done all of your work, and in the past you knew exactly what that was going to look like at the end of it, right? Because yeah. you had it all on paper. But now you have this conversion where it's being, you know, basically digitized. What was that? Did that change? I mean, this, I assume it changed kind of the way things look. And how do you, how did you, or did you have to change the way you worked in order to like adjust? Actually, not that much, really. And it, it still boils down to the guy with the pencil. Yeah. And the eraser and the brain that tells the story that uh designs the characters, the style of that particular film. So we just learn how to present it to them and then they have to it's- reinterpret it. I guess that there's some trigonometry and all of that. It's math. I, it's it's math, but it but it works and it 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 actually comes out the way it's supposed to look. And um, those fellows at the keyboard and some ladies, um, they do a darn good job in interpretation. Uh, but now I feel art- artistically they've gone so far with it. It's so much detail, so perfect. It's like because there's something about the drawing in it. It, it, it there, there's a like a human touch to it, you can see. Yeah, the, there's a feel. Uh, there's a feeling. It's a maze. I, I'm sure they use regular film, and then they have a way of of uh, digitizing it somehow, so it looks like a, a, a colored, artificial something. The the character and the trees and so on. Uh, and some of it's it's very lovely that they, they can tell a lot of stories and have have a lot of characters uh, acting at the same time and moving every which way and uh, so in terms of things moving, um, it, it's opened up the door for a lot more complex uh, filming. <laughs> Now sometimes it's necessary, but maybe sometimes it's a little, a little overdone. Well, I mean, then I was, I was going to ask you about this because one of the things that's so enduring about those wolf cartoons is can we still watch them? Like we still refer to them. But they're so, still on TV. I I grew up with the Flintstones and the Jetsons. Who mm-hmm. thought, yeah, like long after they first aired. I mean, they're, they're really enduring, and you know, you see them redone time and time again was was there ever like a thought when you were working on these that these are going to be like timeless for the hour well maybe we didn't know for sure <laughs> but as we moved along we found that it was so yeah and uh, you know i talked to people oh i used to watch that all the time and so on so they they really uh, learned how to tell stories. 
that uh, uh, were good, good mm-hmm. stories and uh, not overly com- complicated. Like some of the, some of the new stuff, it's it's visually exciting. I can they can zoom around and do all kinds of things, and that's great. But it still comes down to Oscar. Uh, there there's a something about a drawn character and, and the love that these artists put into it. And they know how to express themselves with it. So I, I think those will always endure. Now, what it still has Tom and Jerry, then it was the Flintstones, Pebbles and Bam Bam, and, and those uh, related stories. And uh, they were... Gosh, they, they were pretty true to lo- to life in a way. Yeah, true to the way things were. So they'll they'll last a long time. Yeah, and uh, maybe they might simplify some of them a little bit. Uh, camera moves are incredible with with the digitalization, but so much of it's going on, and it's like <laughs> you're going. Where to happen? So, how many? How long did you work at Hanover Rand? A long time, was he? Did I? Did you spend your entire career there? The majority of it? Um, once I got there, yeah, it, uh, it seemed like it. Uh, maybe close to thirty years, something like that. I mean, there were breaks in between yeah. and and so on, but. Uh, it was just, yeah, I think it was a long time, and and I I appreciated how, what how they thought about what they were saying, and they were staying out of the more cookie like Chucky doll. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know evil. Can't, but there's enough evil in the world. We don't have to take a cute doll and make Chucky this <laughs> this nasty nasty <laughs> character. So and then the new CEO and the, you know has has done that, but uh, Bill and Joe we had a more wholesome approach. Uh, approach. Yeah. So oh, you spent the majority of your career there. When did how how did you guys end up in Canada? Mm-hmm. But how did you end up here? Yeah, that that's that's, that's a story. story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, well. Uh, along the way, I met this funny little man <laughs> in the hall, and I I got and to so see... So this was in the hall at the Hanover River? Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, I got to... He said he invited me over to his room, and it was like, meet me forge. So he showed me his portfolio, and I, I went, this guy is incredible. And what the, the drawings and, and, and the ideas uh, were really very good. So I guess what Bill and Joe did, because there's always these rough characters around that they want to be out of the studio. Okay. <laughs> uh, they, they cleaned out, they, they cleaned out the, the, um, room where you got your Cokes and your potato chips and stuff. And they gave Ken his room between the two of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he had this throne room between Bill and Joe. And uh, so that worked out. And, and uh, <laughs> uh, the big guys went off and made their own studio. So. Wow, but but I always thought that was like very nice, and and uh, they all got along so well. And uh, I actually both both of them, uh, both Bill and Joe, are very fine, very good people. And uh, it, it was, I guess, a real a pleasure working there. Yeah. And you know, you meet more talented people, new people, like that woman, the the woman that drew all the children. She was phenomenal. So so Ewow, and they would never, would never. That was that was Ewow's permanent job, and he's responsible for creating an awful lot. And they were so ethical, and they hired 
they hired the two of them coming off the camps. Yeah. And so they they really made a good career. And I I just owe Willie a lot for helping me along and, and giving me a step up. And um, I I really owe a lot. I've been very very blessed working. I love working with other artists. So they're really crazy. <laughs> and well, you have to have a little bit of that. And and uh, I couldn't do what you do. <laughs> I, I'm a little lost the wall sometimes, <laughs> and, and I always admire why they like, should keep their heads straight and know where things are and how to run it. Oh, we all have <laughs> moments. We all have moments. We have moments. <laughs> so I, I knew I was cut for that, but I, I, I did get to be uh, ahead of some uh, background departments for different studios, and also. In Hanna Barbera, they had so much work. We had there were two major background departments. So in this one, uh, I worked, and uh, he was my boss at the time. Yeah. But but I've worked as, as sometimes that I'm the head of the department. Yeah. So, so I've had those jobs, and um, and how is that? How is being head of the department different than you know? doing the actual work. So I'm assuming you're still doing the work. Well, I I am also do, doing the work, but you got to see how each person, what they were talented, where it was at, and how they related to one another. And mostly it it's just been a lot of fun, you know. And then sometimes there's a, a bad egg in there. Not Not here. <laughs> but I uh, he's from Holland, um, uh, Bill Littlefield. Uh, it, he was an older man who was an illustrator, and here's this young chick, and she's head of the department. And, and in, in a very kind way, he'd start to raz, raz me. <laughs> so we had a thing going, and finally, um, I took everything he, he did as no fun and, and joke it, and it, it just one day he just warmed up, and said we felt so happy there, and and we got along and we could kid around, and and um, so it was a really wonderful experience. But it, well, you really took all of those challenges in stride. I mean, like you say, here's this young woman now leading this department with a lot of men, and some of them older, and yeah. and you're the boss. Yeah. Yeah, well, and and, and uh, it's just that that he asked me some. I always came up with a funny answer. He just couldn't help himself. <laughs> <laughs> so I I guess I always got along and loved what I was doing, and I couldn't imagine doing something else. Yeah. And but the fact is, my brain doesn't work. Okay. My husband tells me that way. <laughs> uh, so, so it worked. For, it worked for me running the department and 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 getting to see what they, uh, what each one, how, what their particular talent where they were strong. Yeah. And we all uh, we all belong to the union. We knew the rules, both the union rules and the studios rules. There was never a problem for any. We all knew what we were supposed to do. Yeah. And so we just worked fine. Yeah. And we kidded around as much as we can. Yeah, let's get through the days the best you can. We did. Yeah. And there were always uh, clever artists there, and they were, had a complaint about the studio, but they were so good at what they did. They would put it in such and such a way and Bill Hanna would go around after work, and you'd think, oh, he'd be mad. But no, these were very funny cartoons posted from uh, Bribes. And put oh, that's great. And he'd go around. And, and look at them. And, and he'd you know, go, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they were good. They were very, they were very clever. And, and um, yeah, yeah he, he would do that. Oh, that's funny. So, um, 
And it wasn't the, you know, the old bulging bloodshot eyes. No, it not that at all. It's much more. As a matter of fact, we had one 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 fellow from um, who was he? Oh, from Cuba, and he was a hot headed, hot chuck Cuban, and he bugged all of us. And uh, uh, I I don't even Bill and Joe didn't even know what to do. Sometimes they had to isolate him in a, in a room if I himself uh, to be quiet. But but we had some some characters like that, and and uh, and I know I have a story about them. That's okay. But you have more. You've probably forgotten more stories than people <laughs> have in their clues. So don't even worry about it. So so you meet Ken, and what about what time? What when was that? Oh gosh, about twenty five thirty years. Oh, okay, so the seventies. 80s? It, no, it must must have been. Um, yeah. In, in the... In the... Uh, in the stars. Yeah, so in the 70s, 80s, you meet Ken. Yeah, you yeah. You're working together at Anna. When did you guys leave? Oh, uh, oh, we came here in 1994. Okay. September. So... So what brought you here? Well, uh, Ken wanted to come back. And the things were changing uh, digitally. Um, I did a few. The, I I rendered a few back backgrounds uh, on on um, il- Illustrator type of, of things, but it was they were Bill and Joe were getting close to retirement, mm-hmm. and we had a new studio head, and I or he was vying for it, and and uh, we figured to hit be chosen eventually. Mm-hmm. And, and I think Ewo probably at, at, at that point, uh, he'd been the heart of the studio, the creativity. So he was winding down, and I sort of, and then strange people come for job interviews, and I was sitting here, and I'm going, mm-hmm. you know, do I want to do this? And so maybe Ken, uh, that we got together, we got married, and maybe he'd like to come back up here. Time for a change. And time, time for a change. And uh, so, so we sort of set that in motion. And and uh, it took a couple of years, two or three years, to pack up and arrange things. And uh, so, and I'd had to retire at some point. So. Um, I think we came up and it was a really good good choice. I mean, we camped and we and we worked. We worked at uh, uh, Bard. I did some work for Bardell and and uh, uh, E. What is it? I'm sorry. i I'm not doing the the um, name of the studio, but I know it, it's a big electronic, uh, a big. Electronic arts? Yeah, electronic arts. Okay. So I ended up doing some projects for them to, okay. to, to feed their yeah. keyboard people. <laughs> <laughs> and we learned to do that. And, and uh, over the, it, 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 we didn't have to go in. We could turn on the TV or the and, and get on the phone or, 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 or transmit over the internet what wow. we had done. Yeah. So... So it worked. Um, when we weren't working in the studio, we we started by just saying we wanted to work at home. Yeah, for at least one day a week. Yeah, and uh, so uh, some of the people in the studio were very disgruntled. I mean, so maybe at a board game anymore uh, about it because they thought we were la 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 playing around. When actually we were working mm-hmm. longer and harder to to meet their schedules, and so it helped us actually um, be more productive. Be more productive. So uh, yeah, that 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 worked out, and and we learned how to you know learn how to do it. But I mean, so I mean, in ninety four, the the industry here was still pretty small. There weren't a lot of yeah. companies. Did you guys have a plan 
of like what you were going to do when you got here because I mean, I'm assuming that you get, you're not expecting that you're going to find a job right off the bat when there isn't that much happening here. It's not Hollywood yet. Um, well, you know what? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure quite how it worked out, but I think that Ken knew, and, and I know that, that the studios were sending work up here. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, so, so it was coming and well, if they can do it, you know, what if we can go and we can yeah. offer something we already know what to do, and maybe it might help uh, help some yeah uh, get into it in, in a different way for sure. So um, yeah, so I I think I think Ken Ken probably knew more of where to go, but. But I actually I was still uh, getting jobs from Los Angeles, mm -hmm. uh, a few jobs from here, and sort of you know adjusting and and doing that, and then from learning more. And Ken Ken knew a lot of people, and and uh, so it just it just worked out. That's amazing. Okay, so so you know you work for fifty years. And you know, you never fully retire. I mean, you're still working no. now. But let's talk a little bit about the, the change in pace from you know working in a studio system where so you're all workers. Yeah. You're not. So, <laughs> so like, talk a little bit about that. About like you know easing into this sort of later part where you know you're still working, but things the pace is a little bit different. And and how do you stay creative at this point in your career? Well, how can you not? Because I guess you were creative in the first place. No, no, no. I can't wait. You just can't stop. You know, and I'm just sitting here. <laughs> but I'm sure it looks different now than it probably did when you were actually working at the studio where, you know, you had these assignments that need to be done. Now you're doing all of this work on for yourself. Money? Well, then you use what you, what you already know. Definitely. And what else do you want to say? Which way to go? And I, I mean, like, that drawing of those two girls in Hawaii that Ken did. Beautiful. He made his statement in a single. It didn't need a whole film to make it happen. And it, it just it just sort of happened. Yeah. Yeah. We just did it and we I were I was lucky to work for like electronic arts and uh Bardell and I learned uh how to how to present it to to a digital person mm -hmm. and what things they they needed to to be able to do it and then of course there were the the, the little color keys and um what I, I met a woman was from the UK she was a very good colorist and I think that gradually they they were learning up here and expanding and and uh and then there were already talented people that that had had their their own thing that they they had for years. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I you know it just worked out, and uh, we still had to meet. Like if they had a schedule, it was done when it was needed. Uh -huh. You know, we we met it and didn't bother me. So now it's a slow down, but I. <laughs> Really did it kind of key up and maybe do some uh, do more paintings. I wish we could, but um, so we'll see where it goes. So, in the course of your career, I'm, not, I'm sure you've had you've shared some great stories already, but I'm sure there's some highlights one or two. Oh, I can't, I can't think of them right off the bat. Oh, okay, tell me, tell us about the Oscars. Oh, yes, oh, oh okay. So I Ken uh, tells me they they um wanted to they wanted to someone from the studio to represent them at, at the Oscars. So they they choose chose me and June Foray. So we together we we re we reviewed for the Academy all of the animated uh, entries. Oh wow! So. I would she and I would go so every Tuesday or every Wednesday for an evening of show showing, and then was it just the two of you? Yeah, just the two of oh, us. Wow! And it was nice to get to know her 
and she's done all like the voices for animation and and um, many many of them for Hanna Barbera. So she knew uh, a lot of uh, about sound and music. So the two of us would get together and and we'd review uh, what on bass and uh, so that's what. <laughs> Yeah, well, did I? It was. It was here. Oh, okay. I I didn't have a picture. Where's that footed? Well, anyway, anyway, we we went to the Real Academy Awards when when they chose what subject it was, and um, it was just a it was a very nice experience, and I could tell within seconds what was. Because you have to like review it, and this was going to work. This doesn't want to work. Oh, that's an, and it, it was a, a learning experience. Well, so we we really enjoyed that time, and enjoyed she's a nice lady, a fun lady. So we enjoyed it. I got to know someone who was a real real <laughs> acting pro. Oh, but I mean, you had interactions with a lot of actors over the course of the We did. The, the nice thing is that um, uh, Bill would, well, the actors would come and do the voices. I mean, yeah. Buddy Hackett and uh, um, the uh, Sound of Music, Julie Andrews and uh, Herman Munster. What? So, he come around because they wanted to see how it was done, how it was done, and you know, what we were doing. So it came in one day. Herman Munster came in. Ju- Julie Andrew was a delight, and uh, and then the, there'd be a break time. And Buddy Hackett and I would go to the truck and get some goodies, and and uh, I was kidding around with him a lot. We seemed to we seemed to kind of joke yeah. a lot. So. So whenever he came for the voices, I'd be down there at break time, <laughs> and, and we we did uh, joke around for a while. It was a lot of fun. Probably it was as well, you know. Hi, come on, let's let's go get something off the truck, and <laughs> uh, and and he's a funny man in person too. We got change over the years where the um the voice talent didn't come around as much. But no, I th- I think they needed voices all the time. Now, uh, June, uh, she could do many different voices. So, so they used her probably the most. She was, she was so, so good at, at, uh, uh, expressing the character and she could do a lot of them. So she was a, a, a real steady, but he'd hire all kinds of people and, and, um, they'd, we we could see them coming down to the the lunch truck or that afternoon break, but he'd bring people. He'd bring people by, and and it was nice to meet them, and they enjoyed what they were looking at. It was a very pleasant. He he's a very good he's a very good boss, and he knew how to do it. Um. So so that was always a special little break to our day. So, anyway, oh, that's <laughs> great. Okay, so you know you have lots of experience. You've done a lot of different um, jobs in the industry. What would you say to young people that are looking to break in that think that maybe they don't have what it takes? Uh, that you know, what, what what's your what's your piece of advice? Well, they have to really have a deep motivation and to love what they're doing. Draw. And decide that they have something to say, they want to do it, and you just don't, you know, unless it turns out maybe their talent was not good, they wouldn't maybe get out. I I don't know. But you have to really go for it and deep down inside, and you have to uh, be knowledgeable, you have to understand what's going on in the world, you have to know what story or what is it that I want to tell the world? And you have to have that in order even to do a little job. Yeah. You have to have that. You have to have something to say. And we, uh, and the understanding of what is beautiful, what is artistic. Uh, yes, you can be funny, 
and and gross, but not too <laughs> not too gross. <laughs> So I, I think that they have to be very determined and willing to improve, willing to work, and then knowing how, knowing other people, knowing how to socialize. Network, network, network. Network, network, network. And I think you have to like people, you have to be a strong worker, and you have to be very, very persistent. And to do it, to be better, you know. So I never got tired of it, and I st- I still like what I do. It may not be cartoon, but I'm I'm evolving it to say something else. Yeah. You know? So you never, if if it's strong in 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 you, I I don't think you can lose it. You always have, you always have it. You always have to do it. And you're here for, we're here for a reason. So it's like, any more? What's not any more reason? <laughs> so, so that's kind of, uh, to creative people, um, you always are that way. You're, you're something, uh, you're not the, the milkman next door. <laughs> so that, that's how I feel that, that, um, those people who have that, it's just part of their personality, and, and I think they don't they don't give that up easily, and especially if if they have or they're working and earning money. I mean, there's just so many things are opening up and are uh, new for young people, and the world isn't. There may be a lot more to say. The world isn't in a happy place right now. You know, so th- this is what we're given. But uh, what did Disney Studio do in World War II? Uh, I mean, they had their their uh, propaganda, their posters, the things that they would uh, help the war effort, or so on. So I think that this is you know, looking like it's getting in our future in a little bit. So, so it's uh, that. I, I think to be in the communication industry, honestly and sincerely, um, is a good thing. We need we need to continue. We need to continue what was started. I can do that, but that's uh, um, we're as artists in the. On TV and so on, there's a lot that we can say and do and be part of a positive thing. So I would just encourage young journalists, animators, whatever, just to get into it. Dive in and go. <laughs> and I think that's a great place to end, but I, I really wanted to say that your comment about having something to say to do like to know that you have a story and know what that story is even to do the smallest job is so important yeah, yes yeah, it is. you need to be committed and you need to know what your story is yes with it well and you may not be doing that little small littlest job you may be exactly. somewhere that you uh, you are having a wider audience yes yes yeah, yeah, yeah. you so you never know what those opportunities are going to come from that's right you know, I didn't, I didn't no, I have no plan, but okay, you know. <laughs> and let's be honest, you're a force in nature. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. No, it's true. It's Yeah, I just, there's, there's no giving up. <laughs> it never ends. It hurt us forever. Yes. <laughs> you call. He's still recording. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Well, and and to be able to work not just with other artists, yeah, but the the way the industry is run and where it was run, even in Hanna Barbera, you weren't always with the same people. Next season, new 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 one, and new people coming in, new talent. So you're you're really continually yeah with people and with bright people, and, and it's yeah. 
It's got to be challenging, though, with all those personalities coming in and out well, all the time. Oh, yeah. When, once in a while, there's rotten ache, but not. <laughs> we all know how to stay out of their way or, um, you know. Was it helpful to know that it was for a short period of time and probably probably wouldn't be back? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Makes life a little easier. So, yeah, we're, we're first, uh, if, if it was a kind of a hostile person, or, you know, there are nasty people out yeah. there, but, but we learn how to, uh, and, and then they expect us from the front office to be a little wild. And I know <laughs> one of got irritated. So he took his, his easel at his desk and, Went into the vets for who would work there for. I mean, we do some crazy, we do crazy things. So, so they finally had to say, "Okay, come on, go go back to your room now." You can't work out in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, oh, and, and somebody was bothering him, and and uh, and so of course when Halloween came, we we would have the the press would come and we would all dress up in fantastic costumes. So. Uh, we we really um, had lots of fun because the television would come and, and everybody's thinking of the most gory and I just the creative. <laughs> I mean, yeah. these people going a month for Halloween. Yeah, exactly. You have a bunch of creatives and you give them free reign to oh, do what they want for Halloween. It was amazing. So, <laughs> so we we had had a really good time at, at those times. So. And uh, so we, I, I you know, because of Joe, we had the, uh, all the trees growing on the front of, on the front of the studio, but they would catch the olives and splatter on the sidewalk, and there were these pools of oil. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway. And, and there was a lot of people in the studio. I mean, we had a huge parking lot with like just over 200 cars. Oh, so, so there, there would be a big out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they were producing a lot of TV. Thank you. There was a lot coming from the studio. And for a long time, they were the only ones, right? Yeah. That one, yeah. yeah. So... I, I should have bought out on it. I have a couple couple of jokes that uh, I know it was I was talking about this uh, Cuban background person, and he was such a he irritated everybody. So one of the cartoons was uh, a member of of the of Hanna Barbera and and Fidel Castro at the table, <laughs> and and uh, what would you trade for this? Person, oh, you know, he would have liked to have him, and he's sitting there like that. And, and so, it sounds like that's like cartooning was like drawing was the way that a lot of stuff got resolved at the studio. Yes, the like, grievances you don't write yes. it down, you draw. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And they were good at it. They knew how to do it. Okay, where did those all end up? Well, I think they if they they took them out. Oh, okay, yeah. Is a tre- treasure trove. <laughs> it was. It was. Well, I have one, and I don't. I don't know where I put it. it it's that Fidel Castro one, but they were clever, and 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 Bill never took it badly. He just went around and enjoyed, you know, yeah. looking at. <laughs> uh, well, people had a talent that enabled them to assess with humor yeah. the situation, and and uh, they put them up. <laughs> That's funny. So anyway, that that was a, a good part of, of working there, and uh, that the, and the, oh, and there was a group of us ladies that 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 we were the Christian ones. So we we had appointment. We we there was a pocket part next door, and uh, we go lunchtime and we would pray for the Hollywood industry. We prayed for the studio. And oh yeah, the Knights and Satan service. They wanted uh, Hannah Barbier to do a thing, so we pray about that. We, I don't think that's something we really want to do. So we would do that on a regular basis. So there were all kinds of little 
sub things going on that were yeah very nice, but we did, and and a lot of times we even prayed for other stars that were screwing up their life. And I mean, we felt okay, okay, let let's uh, do it, you know. So uh, that was our our little group that that we meet once in a while, and uh, and then there was always Halloween and uh, something that we were doing, and I think they they threw a lot of their cells away. Oh. They were, I mean, pile. I mean, you talk about three, sh- you know, piles and piles. So, well, yeah, the amount of TV that was done, I mean, it'd be thousands. It was incredible. But I think somebody was smart enough to. Pilfer it out of the bin, and that stuff I, is floating there wow. for yeah. collectors and things yeah, yeah. like that. And I'm glad they did. And I, I felt funny at the time, but I thought, oh, oh, wait a minute. I mean, they're finished with it, and they're actually throwing it away. So I, I, th- I think there are things floating around there for collectors. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any in box? I, I just, I just had that one. Yeah, because he was in my department. Boy, we were glad to get rid of him. You know, oh, he even threatened threatened somebody with a gun. Oh wow! And he was he he was riding in the jeep with Quavo Guevara, and he arrested him and oh, took wow. him to this. And I, I mean, probably true. <laughs> you know, it, it, I mean, this was some character. Oh boy. <laughs> So, <laughs> that's funny. But I, I think the talent for uh, of cartoonists, they are able to say things uh, that are very bad, but they do it in such a way that it is so clever and true. No. And that's, I, I can't do it, but I, I know the others, uh, they, they're just so good at it. It's a special talent. It is a special yeah. talent. Yeah. Yeah, the political cartoons are very, very good. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they <you> are. Know, <laughs> um, so I, I guess I am. I, I put it having a little senior moment. I, I can't remember everything, but. Well, like I say, you've seen more <laughs> and forgotten more than most people live. I mean, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing the time and the insight. It's been fun.